A car drives along a road in the British countryside. In the back seat, an American woman named Greta Evans is sleeping. She is awakened by the driver when they finally arrive at the house where she will be working. The driver informs her that the owners had to step out for a moment and that she should wait for them in the parlor. Greta enters the house and takes off her shoes, leaving them next to her belongings by the entrance. When she hears a noise from upstairs, she decides to investigate. Along the way, she notices a painting of a couple with their son, presumably the family she will work for. Continuing further inside, she comes across a child's room, which she enters and picks up a toy for a closer look. Startled, she drops the toy when a man named Malcolm says hi from behind. He is the grocery boy. After Malcolm introduces himself, he invites Greta to join him in the kitchen to show her around, an offer she accepts. As they put away groceries and chat, Malcolm guesses Greta is American and that she might be running away from someone. Eager to change the subject, Greta asks him about the family. Malcolm describes them as very nice and generous. When she inquires about the son, however, he hesitates, unsure of how to explain. Their conversation is abruptly interrupted by the entrance of Mrs. Heels Hire, who notices Greta isn't wearing shoes and asks why. They return to the house entrance to retrieve them, but her shoes are not where she left them. Mrs. Heels Hire assures her they'll turn up, it's just her son playing tricks. In another room, Mr. Heels Hire is talking to his son, Brahms, whose face is obscured by the chair. As the two women enter, Mrs. Heels Hire introduces Greta to her husband and son. However, when they step aside, it becomes apparent that the figure seated in the chair is actually a doll. Initially, Greta laughs, thinking they are playing a prank on her, but the serious expressions on their faces suggest otherwise. Their interaction is interrupted by Malcolm, who enters the room and treats the doll as if it were alive. Malcolm then leaves, and encouraged by his reaction, Greta approaches the doll, shakes its hand, and expresses hope that they can be friends. Mrs. Heels Hire then asks Mr. Heels Hire to take Greta's belongings to her room while she shows the new nanny everything she needs to know. Oh, while making their way upstairs, Mrs. Heels Hire tells Greta they've tried other nannies, but Brahms rejected them all, although they had not been as young or attractive as Greta. Upon reaching Brahms' room, Mrs. Heels Hire guides Greta through the daily routine. Brahms must be awakened every morning at 7 a.m. and changed into clean clothes a task Mrs. Heels Hire asks Greta to demonstrate. However, she disapproves of Greta's method and ends up stepping in to do it herself. They then proceed to the studio. Brahms has three hours of lessons five days a week, starting with poetry. This is followed by music appreciation, which is very important to Brahms, and it must be played rather loudly. A couple of hours later, they all gather for dinner, with the doll included. After they finish, Greta takes the leftovers to the kitchen. However, Mrs. Heels Hire informs her that they don't throw away food because they're in the countryside. Instead, they must save it in the freezer for emergencies. Mr. Heels Hire enters the room, hands Brahms to his wife, and takes Greta with him to check the traps. Greta follows him outside and finds him removing rats from the traps in the garden. While they check the traps, Mr. Heels Hire shares more about the house, mentioning that all the windows have been permanently shut. He admits he's unsure how they reached this point but assures Greta that, despite how it may appear from the outside, their son is with them. Greta assures him she understands. In the evening, the parents put Brahms to bed, and they all pray together while Greta listens. Her name is even included in the prayer. Mrs. Heels Hire then asks Greta for a moment of privacy with her family. Greta waits outside while they talk, but the couple emerges soon after to tell Greta that Brahms wants her as his nanny, if she'll accept. Greta agrees, and Mrs. Heels Hire hugs her. Greta then goes to her room to call her sister Sandy on the landline. She describes how strange everything is, including the lack of Wi-Fi and phone signal. Sandy tells her she needed to get away and that this job suits her situation perfectly. She also reveals that Greta's ex, Cole, has been incessantly calling and even appeared at her house, frightening her child. However, Sandy assures Greta that she hasn't disclosed her whereabouts and promises she never will, wanting to protect her sister from further pain. The next morning, Greta leaves her room upon hearing noises and finds Mrs. Heels Hire scolding Brahms for throwing his toys on the floor. Mr. Heels Hire startles Greta while she is watching, apologizing for the sudden commotion. He explains that it has been such a long time since they went on holiday, and they are anxious to go. He also hands Greta a sheet of paper outlining the daily rules she must follow. As they walk towards the house entrance, Mrs. Heels Hire joins them with Brahms in her arms. Mr. Heels Hire advises Greta to be kind to his son because then he'll be kind to her in return. However, if she mistreats him, he is interrupted by his wife before he can finish the sentence. Greta promises she'll treat the boy as if he were her own, and after being handed the doll, Mrs. Heels Hire hugs her and apologizes in her ear. Greta takes Brahms outside, and together they watch the couple leave in the car. Upon returning inside, Greta disregards the rules. She 
places Brahms on a random chair and covers him with a blanket because he creeps her out. Before heading to the kitchen to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, she takes the sandwich with her to a reading chair, where she enjoys some wine and reads a magazine. Eventually, she falls asleep. When she awakens, it's nighttime. She picks up the tray intending to take it to the kitchen but stops midway when she sees the blanket has slipped off Brahms. Feeling uneasy, she picks him up and takes him to his room, throwing him carelessly on a rocking chair before going to bed. Greta is awakened by the sound of a child's laughter echoing in the house. She leaves her room to investigate and when she reaches the painting of the family, she steps closer to examine the child and is suddenly grabbed by the neck by a hand emerging from the painting. She then wakes up in bed, unharmed. Disturbed by this dream, she goes to Brahms' room to check on him. He is still on the chair where she left him, and there's water dripping from his eye. Anxious that it might be tears, she moves closer, only to discover it's just water from a ceiling leak. To protect the doll, she places him on the bed before leaving. In another part of the house, she discovers a door leading to an attic and tries to open it using a fire poker, but to no avail. Later that day, we see Greta attempting to keep herself busy. She tries to call her sister, but reaches her answering machine. The phone rings as soon as she hangs up, and Greta quickly picks it up, only to hear static noise. The next day, Greta is at the gates collecting the mail when Malcolm arrives in his car with the groceries. They go to the kitchen, where Malcolm shows her that all leftover food must be thrown into a trash bag he will take with him. Greta complains about Malcolm not warning her about Brahms, and he explains that he didn't want to spoil the surprise. Greta then asks him about the story behind the doll. Malcolm takes her to a grave near the house, revealing that Brahms did not survive a house fire on his eighth birthday, and the doll appeared the day after. He acknowledges that it all seems very strange, but assures her it's harmless. Greta does the math and realizes the couple has been living like this for 20 years. Malcolm tells her they had been searching for a nanny for a year before Greta came along and offers to take her out to show her the nightlife in town if she's feeling restless promising not to tell anyone. Greta accepts after making sure Malcolm understands it's not a date, as she recently ended a relationship. Meanwhile, in her own room, Greta is on the phone with Sandy, discussing her plans for the night. Despite Greta's efforts to assure her sister it's not a date, Sandy remains unconvinced. She encourages Greta to socialize more. While glancing at the mirror, Greta notices Brahms looking at her from the other room, which unsettles her. She closes the door. Shortly after, she goes to the bathroom to take a shower, unaware that someone else is in the room. This unseen presence takes her dress and necklace. When Greta exits the shower and looks in the mirror, she realizes she's missing a chunk of hair. Shortly after, she notices the missing objects as well. Upon returning to her bedroom, Greta discovers all her drawers are open and her clothes are missing. Frightened, she leaves the bedroom, only to find the door to the attic open and the stairs ready for her to climb. Concerned it might be an intruder, she grabs the fire poker and enters the attic. As soon as she's inside, the door closes behind her, and she finds herself unable to open it again. When Greta hears a car, she goes to the window to see Malcolm knocking on the door. She tries to make noise to attract his attention, but he can't hear her. She then attempts to break the window with the poker, but breaks the poker itself, and Malcolm leaves. While trying to find another way out, she is startled by a human shadow and falls to the floor, knocking herself out. She wakes up the next morning still in the attic. Discovering that the shadow she saw was just some clothes on a hanger, Greta finds a photo album from Brahms' childhood. Among all the pictures, there's one of the painting in the photo that it was based on, although in the original, Brahms looks much more serious. Greta is interrupted from her thoughts by the attic door suddenly opening on its own. She leaves and returns to her room, only to find her clothes hanging all over the furniture again. A few hours later, Malcolm returns turns to help her check the house for intruders, but he doesn't find any signs of a break-in. Greta points out that this doesn't explain her clothes, to help her feel more at ease. Malcolm decides to stick around. While playing pool, Greta asks Malcolm to share more about the real Brahms. Initially claiming to know nothing else, Malcolm eventually admits to knowing more but suggests the truth about Brahms lies somewhere between the town's two conflicting narratives. According to Polite Talk, Brahms was a good kid, but Pub Talk suggests he was very strange. Pressed for the truth, Malcolm recounts a day when he delivered a package to the house on what would have been Brahms' birthday. Mrs. Heels Hire was celebrating with the doll, while Mr. Heels Hire was in the pool room, drinking and mumbling that he couldn't do it anymore. Mr. Heels Hire invited Malcolm to join him for a drink, during which Malcolm asked about the real Brahms. Mr. Heels Hire, looking heartbroken, admitted that the kid was odd. Greta then goes to her room to speak with her sister on the phone. Sandy informs Greta that Cole has visited her house again. Sandy's child, trying to get rid of him, gave Cole Greta's address. Sandy apologizes, but Greta doesn't blame her. After the call, Greta goes to the bathroom to brush her teeth and notices a moving shadow in the mirror. Investigating further, she finds a bunch of papers scattered on the floor in Brahms' bedroom. She adjusts the doll's face, but it moves on its own to look at her. At that moment, Greta once again wakes up in her bed. She hears some noises outside.
prompting her to open her door and find her lost shoes waiting for her. Feeling scared, she hurries to Brahm's room, where she discovers him in a new position, sitting on the edge of the bed with the list of rules next to him. Greta quickly retreats to her room, locks the door, and attempts to make a call, but the phone isn't working. After hanging up, the phone rings immediately. A child's voice on the other end says her name and asks her to come out questioning why she isn't following the rules. Startled, Greta drops the phone, and then there's knocking on the door. Something is left in front of it with a voice saying, it's your favorite. Greta cautiously opens the door to find a tray with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and Brahms still sitting on his bed with the rules. Realizing Brahms only wants her to follow the rules, Greta approaches the doll. Meanwhile, Malcolm calls and tries to invite her out, but Greta hangs up, focusing all her attention on the doll. In a distant location, the Heels hires write a farewell letter to Brahms before filling their pockets with rock and walking into the ocean. Back at the house, Greta diligently follows all of the rules, except for the goodnight kiss. Several days later, Malcolm visits her after she repeatedly ignores his calls and mail. Despite assuring him that she's fine, she rejects his offer for a date, and he leaves. Alone with the doll, Greta tries to prompt a response from it by asking for a sign of a spiritual presence in the house. Initially, there is no answer, but when Greta leaves the room, she hears a noise. Brahms has moved on his own. Hours later, Malcolm returns to the house because Greta called him, needing someone else to witness what she has discovered. To demonstrate, she draws a chalk circle around him, then leaves the room with Malcolm. When they check on him after a few minutes, nothing has changed. However, Greta wants to try again, so she politely asks Brahms for help. This time, when they leave and return, the doll is no longer standing on the chalk spot. Malcolm finally believes her. They discuss it afterwards. Greta confides in him, explaining that she believes these events are occurring for a reason. Her ex was abusive and caused her to lose her pregnancy. Malcolm now understands why this is so significant to her, and they share a kiss. After putting Brahms to bed, Greta returns to her room where she and Malcolm start kissing. Unbeknownst to them, someone watches through the keyhole, and the sudden noise of music interrupts them. They investigate and find the record player playing with Brahms sitting nearby. Greta takes the doll back to bed before going to the kitchen to make coffee. Malcolm suggests it would be wise for her to spend the night in town, but she refuses. Malcolm then tells her another story. Years ago, a little girl named Emily Cribs used to come over to play with Brahms. Her body was found not far from the house on the same day it caught fire and the killer was never found. Greta still refuses to leave. She checks on Brahms in his room and, for the first time, gives him a goodnight kiss before heading to the attic. There, she looks at the photo album again, finding pictures of Emily and noticing her annoyed expression as Brahms stared at her creepily. The following day, after returning to the house from checking traps, Greta hears the pool table being used. She goes there with Brahms and discovers that Cole has broken in. They share dinner, during which Cole tries to persuade her that he has changed and asks her to come back to him. Malcolm arrives, and after awkward introductions, he uses the groceries as an excuse to talk to Greta privately. He expresses his concern that Cole will harm her, but Greta assures him she has a plan. Malcolm leaves the house but remains nearby, choosing to stay in the car just in case. Inside, Greta brings Cole sheets and pillows for him to sleep on the couch. Cole persists in trying to convince her to leave with him, and he leans in for a kiss, which she avoids before leaving. She takes Brahms to his room and confides in him that she needs help. Later that night, blood drops fall on Cole's face, and he wakes up to find rat bodies in his bed. Bag, a red message on the wall that reads get out and the doll sitting nearby. Greta rushes to him when she hears him yell her name, and when she arrives, he accuses her of being behind it all. Greta grabs Brahms, and an enraged Cole begins to chase her. Malcolm hears the commotion and rushes inside to find Cole taking the doll from Greta. He starts shaking the doll as he shouts, and fed up with Greta and Malcolm's warnings to be careful with Brahms, he smashes the doll against a chair. A disturbance in the walls catches Cole's attention, prompting him to approach the mirror in an attempt to locate the source. Suddenly, the mirror shatters, throwing Cole backward and revealing the true source of the noise. A grown man wearing a porcelain mask, the real Brahms, calling out for Greta with the same childlike voice she had heard on the phone. Brahms attacks Cole, and after a struggle, he manages to kill him. He then goes after Greta, but Malcolm intervenes, hitting Brahms and allowing him to take Greta away. Brahms begins chasing them through the house. Despite their efforts to lock themselves in Greta's room, Brahms, familiar with the secret passages in the walls, easily reaches them. After a frantic pursuit, they discover the entrance to one of Brahms' secret passages and use it to escape. Inside, they stumble upon a hidden room where Brahms has been living. The room is equipped with everything he needs, including a doll bearing Greta's dress and hair, which he had made to resemble her. Among his possessions, they find the letter from his parents, indicating they will not return and giving him permission to have the girl. As they attempt to leave the hidden room, Brahms finally catches up with them. After a tense chase, Brahms 
bombs leaps on Malcolm, knocking him unconscious while Greta finds an escape route and flees to the gates of the property. There, she pauses, realizing she cannot leave without Malcolm and resolves to return for him. Back inside the house, she retrieves a screwdriver and conceals it in her pocket before confronting Brahms. Greta asserts that she has come back for him and, using her firm nanny tone, commands him to return to bed. After some hesitation, Brahms complies. Greta escorts him to his room, tucks him in, and as she attempts to leave, Brahms asks for a goodnight kiss. She initially refuses, stating it as punishment for his misbehavior. Brahms, however, seizes her arm and insists, leaving Greta with no choice but to oblige. As Brahms leans in for the kiss, Greta seizes the moment to retrieve the screwdriver and uses it against him. Brahms reacts by pushing her away and then grabbing her by the neck, pinning her against the wall in an attempt to strangle her. Initially appearing overpowered, Greta gathers her strength, pushing the screwdriver deeper until Brahms collapses. A piece of his mask breaks off, revealing his burnt face. Greta hastily leaves the room to find Malcolm and make their escape. She smiles, realizing they are finally free. The movie ends with a pair of hands, clad in sleeves resembling Brahms, repairing the doll. Thank you for watching. Watching the recap. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel as we will be sharing more recaps like this.